Hey everybody, it's the Library Lady with you today, and I'm featuring a great book by Kate DiCamillo called The Illuminated Adventures of Flora and Ulysses. It's published by Candlewick Press in uh, 2013, and uh, her name may sound familiar to you from the one and only Ivan, a wonderful book by her, um, but also because of the newly released book, The One and Only Bob, the sequel that just came out on May 5th, so you're definitely going to want to check that out. Um, this was published in 2013 by Candlewick Press and actually is the recipient of the um, Newbery Medal in 2014. And as you can uh, hear a little bit of the book today, you'll see why it won the award. Definitely a great contribution to children's literature. And she does a fabulous job of weaving together a wonderful story of a self-proclaimed cynic, Flora, and this amazing superhero squirrel, which she names Ulysses after the uh, tragic and unfortunate encounter it has with a vacuum cleaner. Now, um, the great thing I love about this book is the way she does weave together the story through prose, uh, but also with comic strip writing and some poetry. So uh, it's a unique blend offering a little bit of variety. And for your child, um, it works as great as a read aloud. So if you've got that child, maybe age seven to 10 or so, um, that you wanna do it as a read aloud. Um, it's about 230 pages. So I always encourage parents to kind of look at the text and the layout to see if they think their child could um, take that on as an independent read. But a lot of great vocabulary, very strong, rich vocabulary. Um, so I will say if they do it as an independent read, there may be some new and unfamiliar words to them. Um, comic strips are kind of, I think, a lost art in a lot of ways. And so um, I would encourage you to explore that. We'll talk a little bit in the idea section uh, in a moment. But the illustrations are fabulous. Um, they're one, some of them are full page spreads um, by illustrator KG Campbell. And they are absolutely amazing um, and do a great job of kind of, yes, blending everything together between the story, the pictures, and this comic strip book writing style. So um, we'll see a little bit of the story today and then uh, share some ideas on how you can use this or what you could do with your child. But I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, and so Mrs. Tickman is her neighbor who um, gets this vacuum cleaner and it actually starts off in comic book format. Um, and Flora is kind of um, witnessing all of this through her window. Um, now Flora is a child of divorce. Her mom is very, um, just consumed by her writing. Um, she's a writer and um, kind of left to be on her own. Um, does not really have a great relationship with her mother. Um, and so that's kind of an element that comes throughout the story. Um, and then another character, William Spiver, who is her neighbor's nephew, also a little quirky and odd himself and um, been dropped off for this summer to spend it with the aunt. And uh, right there, also kind of neglected and pushed aside by his parents. And so the two do have some similarities uh, despite Despite Flora's uh, willingness or openness about seeing those at first and so here he is uh, in the story so you've got these two kids you've got this neighborhood um, you've got the squirrel and it's just a heartwarming tale it's very witty it's funny um, she does a great job of keeping you kind of on the edge of your seat because of what you expect to happen it doesn't always happen sometimes it does it's just got some unique twists and turns um, capturing kind of these adventures of Flora and the squirrel and also on um, how to deal with her mother um, um, because that is the uh, arch nemesis of the squirrel. Um, as you can imagine, her mom is none too pleased to have a squirrel in the house. And so there's also that aspect and all these adventures that happen throughout the book. So it's just a delightful story. And like I said, a winner of the Newbery uh, Award. So you can't go wrong there. Um, I'm going to skip over that beginning um, part and jump to chapter one, where it actually starts the, the writing the, um, to give you a little taste of it. And it says, chapter one, a natural born sentence. Flora Bell Buckman was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother, and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto, which is her favorite comic book read. Um, Flora, her mother shouted, what are you doing up there? I'm reading, Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Do not forget the contract. At the beginning of the summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comics and toward the bright light of true literature. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced and she wrote rom romance novels. Talk about idiotic hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her in a comic strip bubble. 
It was a comforting thing to have wor words hanging over your head, especially negative words about romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural born cynic, and Flora suspected that this was true. So um, we'll stop right there. She hears this loud noise outside. Um, she sees Mrs. Tickman with this vacuum who looks and appears to be vacuuming her yard. And so I'll kind of jump to that part into chapter one. And it said, um, that can't be, thought Flora. Who vacuums their yard? Actually, it didn't look like Mrs. Tickman knew what she was doing. It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge. And the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind or its engine or, or something. A few bolts shy of a load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw that Mrs. Ticken and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Hey now, said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words, and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. And then uh, you can see, and she's very panic stricken. And I'll jump to the very end of chapter one, where it says, she stood at the window and watched as the squirrel was vacuumed up. Poof, vum. Holy Bagumba, said Flora. And when I did this as a read aloud at, um, in my library, uh, we used to love saying, Holy Bagumba. So right there, that's just a lot of fun. And she witnesses, and you can see in the illustrations, she's got her favorite comic book, and then kind of the extra bit that comes with it, Terrible Things Can Happen to You, which kind of just puts these notions into her mind, but also serves as a way when she's faced with difficulties of what would terrible things can happen to you say, and what kind of advice and uh, suggestions could that help her with. So um, a lot of fun, just again, very, very witty, a heartwarming tale. I think she does a great job of connecting her characters. It really draws you in as a reader, um, and it's just a wonderful story. Um, comic strips, because they are such a huge part, um, I would suggest maybe doing some comic strips with your children, whether they retell the story, create their own story, but just exploring. And you can find lots of different templates online. This is one I have. But um, just comic strip writing um, can be fun, especially uh, if you watch my video on Ralph Writes a Story. Sometimes just writing can um, be kind of daunting for kids with traditional just paper and pencil and so comic strip they're still writing uh, but getting to put in some speech bubbles and text and illustrations and it's just a different format and so that may appeal to your child um you also may want to give a little activity to have them create their own superhero what animal would they choose what superpowers would it have would it have an arch, ne arch nemesis and uh and even maybe fashioning out a little outfit for it whether they sketch it or make it out of paper or fabric um or an outfit for ulysses to wear so um if you want to get a little crack crafty with that and create an outfit. Um, William Spiver, as I said, very unique, odd, eccentric, kind of off the beat little kid, and uh, he loves space. Um, and so if you have a space lover, this would be a good time to connect to that part of the book um, and maybe explore some different space websites and space books and other resources uh, pertaining to that. Uh, also with um, poetry, um, because once uh, Ulysses encounters these supernatural powers, he can type, he writes poetry, he can fly, um, lots of unique things, but he writes an ode in the epilogue to Flora and and um, I think it'd be a lot of fun with your child to pick somebody, a person that's special to them, um, and write an ode. And so you have this poem here at the very end, and you could almost take out some of the adjectives and the nouns and substitute those for your own person or ode that your child is writing. So um, that may be a fun activity to do. Um, and in addition, maybe getting um, some magnetic poetry. You can get that probably at your local bookstore or some different vendors and businesses around where you live, uh, or of course, ordering it online. And just have your child explore, making poems, forming uh, thoughts and ideas that way. So that can be something different and unique uh, for that. So um, definitely a great story. Um, if you haven't read one and only Ivan, I will give a plug out for that. Um, and definitely do check out her website. She does have some books um, listed there that she has written as well as some other information and facts about her and how she got kind of started. And um, so yeah, so definitely a great book. Highly recommend it. Flora and Ulysses, a wonderful read for you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time on What's a Story.